Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing one of those rambly vlogs as I like to do from time to time. I know some of you guys really enjoy them and I know some people uh, find that they sort of drone on a little bit. So I'm going to give you fair warning at the beginning of this video. I'm going to be talking about RSS readers today. Um, so since my last battle of the RSS readers, I've generally been circular uh, circulating around the same RSS readers. Uh, someone did recommend uh, Aggregator, uh, which uh, I've tried out. It's based more for the, the KDE desktop than it is for, uh, for the others. It's in QT, obviously. Um, and I tried that out. And although I really liked it and it is, is a good piece of kit, it's very clearly designed for the Plasma KDE desktop and there were some aesthetic errors. I mean, I could get I could get by with it, but an RSS reader is, for all intents and purposes, a very basic piece of, of technology. So, um, it, you know, Liferia worked and it does basically the same thing. Um, but actually today... Uh, I decided to ditch my cloud option for RSS reading. Uh, I use Feedly. Um, so Feedly uh, is the spiritual successor to the Google RSS reader. Uh, it is kind of polished um, and it is kind of nice. Um, it has a great um, it has a great interface. It has pretty good customizability options. The fact that it's in a browser is is good because what because then when you click to go to an article, you're already in the browser and you've already got your extensions and your privacy settings are all set up and everything like that. So a browser-based um, RSS reader is has its merits. And in fact, I'm quite surprised that there isn't like a local RSS reader that opens up in a browser. So it's, you know, it's the same back end as something like Life Area or whatever, but it's um, but the the front end just opens up into a browser, uh, not you know in a similar way to how the old versions of Sync thing used to before they had an interface, they just sort of opened up into a, a local browser window. That would be really good because then again you're already in your browser, so um, shifting across because having the the, the built-in browser in any RSS reader, it's all right, it does the job, but. Um, uh, but I, I guess you know you've, you know there are merits to, to opening it up. You know you've got the images, you've got the stuff. Like a lot of websites, obviously they don't put the full article in the RSS. Um, you know in the RSS article. So a lot of websites use RSS as a way of, of just like as a, as a notification system that just sort of you know lets you know that an article's been put up on the website and then you go and visit the website. I'm completely fine with that. You know I've, uh, uh, you know sort of um, websites need to generate revenue and advertising and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, I don't have, I, you know, I have zero problem with that whatsoever. I mean, it is a bit clunky in the user interface department, but uh, one of the sad facts of the internet is that um, in order for a lot of things that we love to even exist, they they need to be profitable. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I get that. So why did I drop Feedly? Well, it was really for pragmatic reasons. There isn't going to be some sort of like overarching uh, sort of philosophical reason as to, as to why I ditched it. I uh, do sort of lean towards local storage over the cloud these days, just simply because there are so many hacks. There are so many things that can go wrong. Uh, there is not really that much that really is benefited from being uploaded into the cloud if you're just sensible with how you back up. And that's really how I, why I relied on the, or not, yeah, why I use the cloud as much as I do slash did is, is because it's an easy way to back up. So I would imagine a lot of people upload their photos to Google Photos or Flickr or whatever, really just as, as a means of, of backup because hard drives can just, they can go wrong at any time. And you sort of have to, have to assume that you can lose any and all data whenever a, a hard drive goes down. Now you can do things like snapshots and you, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and that's getting a lot better these days. But you know, really, uh, for, for most people, just a simple backup once a week, once a month is, is, is really good enough. Uh, it depends how much work you can afford to lose. And, you know, if you back up, for example, sorts of like big files less regularly and just, you know, but if you come up with a system, you're generally fine. And most people don't have that complicated uh, needs for, for backing up anyway. You know, buy an external hard drive, that will sort you out in most cases. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's worth bearing in mind that, like this uh, cloud service that you use is more likely to get hacked than your house is to catch fire and or get broken into or whatever especially if you keep your backup in some kind of fire safe box which again is a pretty inexpensive solution and probably will be cheaper than the cloud over time anyway you pay an upfront cost and then 
uh, jobs are good. But anyway, I'm getting off track now. Why did I ditch Feedly? I ditched it because it is a premium service and the first tier of the premium um, price is is about it's about five dollars a month and what you get for that I didn't consider it really worth it I think that's that's a lot for an RSS reader isn't it that's um, you know that, that that's sixty dollars a year well it's more than sixty dollars a year because it's more than five dollars it's like five ninety something a month so you're looking at you know you're, you're looking at seventy plus dollars a year in British pounds depending on how I mean, the pound has massively fluctuated, so even making a guess is going to be out of date by the time this video even goes up. But, like I say, it's it's probably not worth it when when our, you know RSS readers are a very simple piece of kit, and um, there are plenty of great local readers as well. It's you know, and it's not like I'm supporting an open source piece of software. It's uh, you know, it, it, they're charging a rather large amount for for an RSS reader. Just to put it in perspective, like SoundCloud, which is again some you know, kind of an expensive service for, for considering, you know, when you when you line it up against the alternatives. Um, that's I think that's about seventy dollars a year for the like the the top pro pro account and that includes hosting mp3s and stuff like that. Of course nowadays we live in a world of YouTube where you can upload an unlimited amount of video for any reason whatsoever and um, and you don't have to pay a penny. So you know interesting times we live in. But uh, yeah, and the thing is about the, the free account as well, is it is actually pretty good. They give you a fair amount. Um, obviously, they sort of like, they, they, they truncate the amount of bandwidth you can use, so that, that means limiting the amount of times you can refresh for new articles. But providing you're not looking for up-to-the-minute RSS um, feeds, then you generally will be fine with that. It'll still update like once an hour, which is what most people set it to anyway. The reason I um, decided to ditch Feedly was because that with the free account, the support is pretty much non-existent. And I noticed that there were an increasing number of RSS feeds that weren't being passed properly through Feedly, but were through things like Liferia and, um, and uh, Aggregate. So, um, so I, you know, I, I weighed up what I'd be losing if I did actually ditch Feedly, and it turned out not that much. So basically, you know, what's my use case? I read articles on the desktop. I read articles on my phone. The thing is, I read. I have an entirely well, not an entirely different reading list from my phone to my desktop, but I have a different reading list. So my, with my phone, it's going to be more newspaper kind of stuff and articles and blogs and. It's going to be stuff that maybe I can like download my reading list before I go out for the day and I can read it on the bus or I can read it in a meeting if I get bored or something like that. You know, so that that's how it works for me. Whereas my desktop RSS needs are a little bit different. They include all of that as well, but they also include things like Reddit um, Reddit posts and, 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 Reddit and subreddits that I like and uh, a lot of social media stuff. A lot of social media stuff can come through RSS. YouTube channels have their own RSS feeds uh, if you can find them. Um, uh, Tumblr and Reddit have, have their own RSS feeds. Twitter used to have its own RSS feed. Uh, any of the GNU social platforms have an RSS um, feed. So in in, F, in, in effect, you, you know, RSS is not just a way of, 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 of building your own sort of custom magazine or newspaper, but it's also a, a great way of, of being a, a asymmetrical uh, social network. So if you if you are a, the kind of person that enjoys social networks from the um, from the perspective of a of a content consumer, then you you know you, you, RSS is, is is a bit of a goldmine for you because you can subscribe to anything on any almost anything on almost any website and it will land nicely into your your RSS reader. I don't know about Facebook. I don't use Facebook and Twitter got rid of that with the second version of their API, which was a tragic shame, but Twitter is a business, despite how much money it's losing. So, um, so yeah, those are the two sort of situations where it doesn't work, but you, you know, your Tumblr's, your Reddit's, they'll be, you know, they'll, they'll, um, they'll pass correctly through an RSS reader. So, um, so yeah, the stuff that I use RSS reader for on the desktop, uh, software updates, um, my uh, email uh, service has um, an RSS feed for like if, if anything goes down, if servers go down, if they're doing maintenance, that all comes through an RSS uh, read. Um, and actually one of the biggest disappointments is that 
you know, we're, we're, newsletters don't often come in RSS uh, feeds. You have, to, you have to sign them up to an email address. And it'd be great if some of the big uh, um, newsletter companies like MailChimp or what have you actually had an RSS option for their newsletters because there are plenty of newsletters I'd like to read. But since I try and keep as tight a ship on my email as possible, I'm sure you, you, know, you guys know what email's like, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's something that passes me by. But because I have a, going back to the uh, use case, because I have such a different sort of reading list between my desktop and my phone, there is not really that necessity to synchronize my RSS list between the two devices. In fact, there are benefits to not doing that. Security and privacy do go hand in hand, especially nowadays. So it never hurts to practice good habits. And a very good habit to practice is not having stuff uploaded to the internet that you don't need uploaded to the internet. Simple as that, really. Because, you know, every bit of information about you on the internet is a security risk. And the more information there is about you, even like sort of publicly knowable information, uh, the bigger a security risk can get. Uh, a simple example would be it, it might be it might be harmless in your mind to say that you're going on holiday on Facebook or something. But to someone that's thinking about robbing your house, that's valuable information. So online privacy is something to take seriously. So the RSS reader that I'm using on the phone is Flim. I talked about it on the last video in this series. Uh, it's really good. It's really, really, really good. It's open source, of course. It's available in the Google Play Store. And one of the things I really like about it is that it can actually retrieve the text from the website that um, even if the text isn't included in the RSS feed itself. And it's it does a pretty good job at doing that. So um, it's what it, so it's particularly good for downloading all the articles that you are thinking of reading. Um, at the beginning of a day, and then if you don't have internet, internet connection throughout the day, you've still got something to read in your pocket. So it's pretty clever from that point of view, something which Feedly does not do. And uh, yeah, Liferia on the desktop, which is which is fine. I mean, on the desktop, anything will do. Uh, and on the phone as well, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the, the offline features of Flim are great. So uh, that's what that's what put it sort of leagues above anything else that doesn't do that, in my opinion. So yeah, um, how do you guys do RSS and do you use RSS uh, readers? I put, I swear by them. Um, it allows me to sort of like read about four or five different newspapers without sort of having to go to four or five different websites. And, uh, and I think that's particularly important as well, you know, to match up news sources and stuff like that. And to keep on top of software news as well. I would hate it if there was like a new distribution of, of something that I really wanted to try out or, or a new version of a piece of software that I wanted to try out and it passed me by. So so yeah, I gotta say, RSS readers, I am in, I'm constantly surprised more people don't use them. I'm, I, it, it baffles me, you know, it baffles me. Um, because people do kind of like, there are people that use Twitter and Facebook almost exclusively as RSS readers, you know, they, they, they don't necessarily follow their friends, but they, they follow their favorite newspapers and media outlets and and, so, and blogs and stuff. But anywho, uh, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what your RSS feed reader situation is down in the comment section below. I'm always looking for, for new ideas. But yeah, overall, pretty darn happy with it. It, it seems... Um, it seems fine. Like that, you know, I don't need to synchronize my, my reading list between my two devices. And, um, and, and so, uh, you know, it, it seems like a pretty, uh, a, pretty much a no brainer. So anyway, yeah, uh, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.